So why is it that the 70% rule might be actually killing your profits? And this means even as a flipper, it's gonna affect the way that you're buying deals, or in this case, not buying deals because you're using the formula. Or even as a wholesaler, you could be potentially getting much higher wholesale fees if you stopped using this formula to sell your properties. So this is a strategy that I, we started using a while ago and where this makes a difference is where the property's ARV is $250,000 or higher, which right now we're in the San Antonio market. That's a lot of properties. Um, and any other market, if the ARV is over 250, this strategy is going to work for you. So I want you to lean in, pay attention to this scenario. We're going to, I'm going to break down both and why it matters so much and also how it is that you're going to be able to increase as a fix and flipper, your deal flow, or as a wholesaler, you're going to be able to increase your profits per wholesale deal. So let's get into it. All right, so I have two scenarios here. So ARV 270 repairs $30,000, right? This is a subject property we're gonna be analyzing in both of these scenarios. ARV, if you don't know real quick, it's the after repair value, after renovated value. This is the value of the house. If you were to take it down, do all the bells and whistles that's required and sell it in the market for the full price that the market requires, right? That's what the ARV stands for. So in this, in this scenario, the ARV is 270. Remember, this works for 250 and above. So we're going to take the 270. We're going to subtract the 30%. So the 70% rule, right? We're going to subtract 30%. In this 30%, the reason you do that is because in this 30%, you have your profit margin and you also have your, uh, your closing costs and all of those extra fees that you're going to have associated with closing a deal. So that's why it's a good rule of thumb usually to use. So you're going to remove those numbers. So it's going to give you an offer price of 189. Now let's remove, remember, like we said, $30,000 in repair. It's going to give you a maximum allowable offer of $159,000. All right. So that's your maximum allowable offer. If you're using the 70% rule now as a wholesaler, you're going to have to subtract your wholesale fee from this number. So let's look at scenario number two. This is what we use. Scenario number two, we subtract 8%. That is our closing costs. So if you're using an agent or anything of the sort, this is going to be your agent fees, your closing costs and stuff like that. For us, it's around eight. It's actually less than 8% because, uh, my business partner is an agent himself. We get a flat fee regardless about 8%. Okay. So that gives us a maximum allowable offer of $248,400. Now let's sub subtract $30,000 profit on this deal, right? We want a $30,000 profit. So that's going to give us $218,400. So to that, we're going to subtract the $30,000 in repairs. And what that's going to do is it's going to give us a maximum allowable offer of $188,400. So just on these numbers alone, right? We're $188,000. So let's take a look at line number two. Now we're going to take $188,000 and we're going to subtract it by our holding costs because we borrow money from private individuals that will lend us the money at eight to 10% interest. Right. So let's let's assume that this deal is going to take us about three months, uh, which a thirty thousand dollar rehab is going to be around that kind of uh, around that profit around that time frame. Sorry. So our maximum allowable offer in this scenario is going to be one hundred eighty four thousand eight hundred dollars. What does that mean is that is a twenty five thousand eight hundred dollar difference from this number up here. You understand? That is a massive, massive difference. So if I'm a buyer, I'm a fix and flip buyer and a wholesaler is trying to wholesale this deal. Look how much more competitive I can be. I can offer more. I can pay more because my target is $30,000 on this deal. So in this scenario, 30% relatively, you're, you're looking at about a 12% profit, uh, margin on this. So that's about $33,000. 
right? But then it's also assuming a massive amount for closing costs and carrying costs and all these things. But because we know our numbers, we know what our numbers are. We know it's 8% and we know it's going to be about 3,600 in, in, in private money costs. So we don't need to factor in that massive of a spread that's pricing us out of getting these deals. And as a wholesaler, if you get yourself a deal, even if you were to get it on the contract at this price, you can potentially sell it for around this margin. And as a wholesaler, you probably should have gotten on the contract for less than 159. So you're talking at at least a $25,000 profit on this deal as a wholesaler. And as a buy and hold investor, you can at least pay 184,000 and still walk away with 30 grand. I mean, that's not a bad deal. Right. And that's going to be as a real estate investor, it's giving you the opportunity to get more deals and make more money, especially in this market. So, like I said, part two, I'm going to show you a few different ways of how we use this strategy. So where do we factor this in? I'm willing to take on this type of deal of a thirty thousand dollar spread because it's a thirty thousand dollar rehab. A $30,000 rehab in San Antonio, you're talking about very light cosmetic work. Nothing crazy. I'm not messing with anything structural. I'm not messing with, you know, plumbing, electrical, with anything that's like some of the big five. Maybe I'll do a roof. Nothing crazy. And also, there's a few other factors that I like to factor in within this. Factors that I'm factoring in to factor in. How many times do you say factor in a damn video? <laughs> so it's a factoring situation, okay? So another thing we like to factor in is um, is the speed of the, the price point, right? So in San Antonio, the median price point right now, I think is hovering around $319,000 as of this, this recording. So anything under that median price point is going to go very quickly. All right. So this house, ARV of 270, it's under that median price point. So got it. Price point is very desirable. Now, where's the house located? Is it located in a neighborhood where the months of inventory are below the median months of inventory in the market? So again, in San Antonio, as of this recording, the median months of inventory are hovering around 3.4 months. So where this house is located, if it's anywhere under 3.4 months, I got myself a house at a very desirable price point and in a desirable area. This means that my chances of putting this house on the market and it selling quickly goes through the roof. So my risk exposure on this deal is very, very low. So now for me to take on this type of deal, buy for 184, put 30 grand into it to make 30 grand, and it takes me all of three months, all day long. Let's go. I'll take this. Because I take this deal, throw it in the pipeline with the eight other deals that we're doing right now, and it's just every single month we're closing $100,000 profits consistently because we have so much deal flow coming in right now because we're running our numbers. Even as a wholesale, even as a wholesale, I, when I wholesale my properties, I run these numbers for my buyers. Right. Because I understand what type of private money are they using? Are they using private hard money? I know what their costs are. I know what my buyers are willing to pay for. I know what type of profit margin they're willing to collect on. Now, if you say I won't do a deal for under 50 grand. Awesome. That is all the power to you. You can make that choice. But us in our market, in our area, 30 grand, we're happy with it because a $30,000 renovation requires very little oversight from us. So it's very little work. We have all the private money lenders ready to lend us money. So the money is there. So it's nothing to us to take this on, throw it in the pipeline and makes a 30 grand in a few months. You understand? So this is why you want to make sure that if you're just sticking to the 70% rule that you are not killing your profits, by running numbers that are just kind of arbitrary, right? That rule of thumb, it's a rule of thumb. It's not a, a hard set rule. Sometimes you got to know your numbers. You got to understand what your expenses are so you can actually understand, hey, do I really need to lowball the hell out of this seller or can I get a deal done at a higher price point? Now, as a wholesaler, you're locking up better deals. Right. Because everybody else is using the 70 percent rule. But you're coming in as a as a wholesaler that understands it's like, hey, if I can pay instead of the 159, if I can pay maybe 165. 
right? And I still sell it for the 180, 184. Hey, I got a deal on top of anybody else that was offering the 159 and I can wholesale it and make maybe 15, 20 grand on this deal. Why not? Right? So I hope this makes sense. Again, guys, if you're liking this, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, comment below or text me at 210-794-9898. You can text me there anytime. I'm always responding all of your questions. So I hope this helps and I'll catch you all in the next video.